everybody, Taryn Quintero here with Cosmetic Aesthetics and Jenna, our lead esthetician and scalp girl. So I'm going to make a video for you guys on how to use the, um, the ProCell microchanneling for the hair growth treatment okay so i'm not actually gonna do hurt because it it is a little painful because we don't i don't numb them um it's just a mess to try and numb them and then get all the numbing out of the hair and like it's just you know it's not worth it um you know pain, beauty is pain and if someone's going through hair loss they will be fine with dealing with it what's great about this treatment is how quickly we get it done we get it done in about 20 minutes um so i'm gonna show you guys that so I've already have my machine wrapped. Um, for those of you that don't know, you can watch how I wrap it on one of my other YouTube videos. If you search microneedling versus microchanneling, it will pop up. Um, but this is basically just a six by 10 inch spray bottle bag and then wrapped around with grip tape. So it fits right over the machine, it's really great. And then you're gonna take a Precision 0.5, okay? And I'll explain why we use that. Now I'm not actually gonna unwrap this today because we're not actually doing it. I'm just gonna show you guys. This is the Precision, it's our smallest tip that we have. And the reason I'm using 0.5 is because the follicle can start growing around 0.8 millimeters and we don't have a 0.75 or anything like that. We go straight, ProCell has 0 uh, 0.5s and then straight to 1.0. So we don't wanna harm the follicle. So 0.5 is perfect and the precision just fits nicely through the part, which is the area that we're working on and it contours nicely on the scalp. So you just pop that tip right in. And then I always like to remind people after every procedure, you need to grab a pair of needle nose twires, <laughs> not pliers and not, it is mixed tweezers and pliers, <laughs> needle nose tweezers, and you need to grab that little piece of plastic out from there, okay? Or some people do like to cut it and then tap it in there and then take another piece of tape and wrap it. You just want to make sure that if you do cut it, that it's not slipping around because you don't want to touch your machine, you know? I mean, obviously we're going to still clean it afterwards, but I like to always take extra precautions. Um, Normally I would not be touching everything with these gloves. I don't even know why I have gloves on. I'm not going to really do the procedure, but um, this is the hair growth product. Also, let's talk about gloves. These are my cheap gloves that I use for cleaning and stuff. But when you are working, I want you guys to use, whether you're tattooing or micro channeling, heavy duty, nitrile medical exam gloves. These are great because gosh forbid you poke yourself with somebody else's, you know, germs, it will not go through those gloves unless you really stab it. Now this, this is what the hair serum looks like. And on the bottle, it also has in green writing hair. Now do not put this on the face. I have had a couple people do it on accident. Some of my clients that have bought the machine from me and you know, they text me, Darren, I just put the hair serum on my face. What do I do? Go straight to a sauna if that ever happens or jacuzzi, just sweat it out, okay? Part of the aftercare that I tell them is to not sweat. So I'll go through that. But okay, let's pretend like we're getting started. So I'll remove everything that I'm not gonna be touching during procedure off my tray. Normally I would, you know, now that I, after setting up, I would de-glove and go ahead and re-glove. I will do it, you know what? Let's just play by the book. I'm still gonna use the cheaper gloves though because I'm not actually doing the procedure. And also, I'm gonna show you guys my tray. I always talk about my tray. My setup is always very clean. I've got a comb to part her hair with and everything else is uh, disposable and well, the machine is wrapped. So I have a very, ProCell is a very, very clean setup. It's awesome. Okay, so we're gonna pop that tip in there, pretend it's there. Normally I would put, you know, a little bib down under her just in case. I'll have you lean back and let's scoot down a little bit. Perfect, okay. So what's great is when we're working on the scalp, the reason this is able to be done so quickly is that I'm only gonna focus on this area right here. From here to here, back to the, the crown and just, just that area because we don't lose hair around here. There's all, we always have that little horseshoe of hair, men and women. Um, we, we mainly just lose hair here. So we don't need to work in those areas. If they are losing hair there, it's probably a form of alopecia, in which case we're not, you know, we're not gonna work on that. Feel free to message me with any questions you guys have, okay? So pretend I've got the tip in and we're gonna go ahead and start. I like to start on one side around the temples. Her hair does not like going that way. Always tell them also, geez, your hair is so long, <laughs> to come in with clean hair. 
and that way because you're going to instruct them to not sweat for try to not sweat for 24 hours you want all that product to absorb so i have them you know not shower for the first you know i don't want any products in there or anything no shampoo so i have them wait a day or two to wash their hair now we're going to turn it on but i'm not really going to turn it on but we're going to do just the same as we do with the hair uh, i'm sorry with the skin i actually will turn it on just to show you right from wrong so this is not what you want to not what you want to do So you're sitting there too long. This is what you want to do. And that's what I want to hear. Okay, very consistent, not too high, just tapping vertically, no scratching or dragging. Okay. I'm turning it off just so you guys can hear me. So I'm looking for the same response. I'm just going down her part slowly. Not too quickly, not like, Ew, but you know, just a lot of overlapping, slowly moving backwards until we see a little bit, you know, redness and a little bit of pinpoint bleeding. Then I'm going to go about a little less than a centimeter over. Oh, there we go. That's what, what would I do without her? So after we go down that part, we're going to roll some serum down the part. Very easy. Very, very easy. Then we're going to go and we're going to go to our next section about a centimeter down or apart. Okay. Same thing. Do, 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 do. Until we get that response that we're looking for. Now, one thing to watch out for. I see a little freckle, but it is it has a little bit of a texture to it. So that I'm going to consider that a skin irregularity. And I'm going to go around that. And I'm going to mark that in her charts. And I'm also going to let her know. You have a little skin irregularity. I'm an esthetician, so I'm going to let her know it is smaller than the size of a pencil eraser. They usually say what, if it's bigger than the size of a pencil eraser, you need to go get it checked out. But just so she knows it's there and she can keep an eye on it. Have somebody, you know, I'll check your head again in six months. Make sure that thing's not growing. But nonetheless, I'm going to go around it. Why? In skincare, we never go over moles or irregularities. God forbid they are precancerous or cancerous. You can literally stimulate the cancer and spread it across her whole head. Okay, so same thing, da, 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 da. okay, I'm going, and then I'm gonna vocalize it to her as well as marking her charts. I'm gonna go around this irregularity that I see in your skin. And if you want to, take a picture for them so they can see it, show it to them. Okay, I'm gonna roll the serum on. Done, next section. You guys get the idea, I hope. Feel free to message me with any questions. So far, there is no aftercare for this, um, other than you know, no sweating and no showering for a couple of days. We don't have like an aftercare product or anything like that. Um, so just make sure they come in with clean hair, and because they're not going to shower for a couple of days. And that is it. And then again, afterwards, you'll want to stick your your uh, comb and either cabicide or barbicide. Um, you can even toss it if you want. They're super super cheap. And then uh, you'll clean your machine, you'll toss everything else out, and you'll make sure to get the plastic out with the little um, needle nose twires, <laughs> tweezers. All right, bye guys, have a good day. <laughs>